Hello, um, and it's my pleasure to introduce Evangelos Vanoulis and Wei Ching Song. Uh, and they their recent article, uh, recently published in Review of International Studies, uh, on cooperation between the EU and China, a post-liberal governmentality approach, examines the way in which European Union's partnership with China affects the lives of citizens, especially in China. Um, and the article approaches this problem through a Foucauldian frame, arguing that EU-China cooperation socially constructs empowered but not liberal uh, political subjectivities for Chinese citizens. And hopefully uh, in the next kind of 10 minutes, we can explore uh, that argument uh, uh, a little bit more. So I suppose the first question I'd like to ask you both is, how did you uh, arrive at this particular uh, topic? What, what was it that interested you and, and, and how did you kind of, uh, kind of get engaged with it? Okay, thank you very much, Martin. It is an honor for both Beijing and I to publish, first of all, with the Review of International Studies. Uh, back to your question. So the existing literature on EU-China relations has always been very gloomy. Let me put it the right way. So the idea is that these two partners, they cannot move forward uh, and they, their cooperation will always be declaratory because uh, they have fundamental differences flowing from uh, the EU's liberal nature and China's illiberal nature. Let me put it that way. So what we have found out there with Beijing is that uh, on the contrary, and uh, to, our, so to the surprise of, our, of some of our colleagues, Actually, lots of things happen and lots of cooperation takes place by means of synergies and joint projects that have uh, an impact on the lives of, uh, in particular, the Chinese citizens. So this is more or less that was our starting point. So we found an interesting puzzle there. Right? So on the level of politics, we see this kind of distanciation uh, from all of the two. And, but on the, on the other hand, all the ground where it's actually practiced is a lot of joint work. So how is that possible? So this is where we start with Beijing. Fantastic. Um, and I suppose uh, the next question I'd want to ask is, well, what are the kind of key sort of arguments and insights? What, what overall is it that your, that your research uh, showed and, 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 and why is that important? So the main thrust of this specific article is that the reason of this conundrum uh, and why actually uh, and how the EU manages to work with China so closely on the ground, it has to do, it can be explained by the uh, uh, governmentality approach of Foucault and by looking specifically and thinking in post-liberal governmentality terms. So what happens actually is that despite their differences that they acknowledge, they manage to in a way bypass these differences for the sake of an effective management of the Chinese population on the ground. But in a way we can say that, I mean, this is something that to a certain extent also can impact on the lives of the citizens, right? So uh, very indirectly, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works in the, in the future when we, we have more or less the investments on behalf of the Chinese government on European countries, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea here that one of our main insights is that, yes, they, there is this kind of post-liberal governmental mentality, right? This post-liberal mindset that allows the two jointly to impose governmental power on the Chinese population. And always the rationale there is that this will happen in a technical, a political manner. Right? So political differences are not the ones that matter. Uh, the one thing that matters is that the population is governed effectively and efficiently. 
Yeah, I mean, when I when I when I edited and read the the article, I uh, I was struck by the way in which you trace kind of intergovernmental cooperation uh, back to impacts on citizens, and I think that's a really kind of important uh, insight in 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 the article. Um, and you frame that in terms of what you call post liberal governmentality. I mean, I, I think people will be familiar with Foucault's kind of. Uh, understanding of governmentality, but what does it mean when you when you talk about kind of post-liberal governmentality and when you talk about a post-liberal governmentality approach? I mean, so far, the uh, Foucauldian scholarship uh, has talked about the liberal approaches to governmentality uh, and a lot of, uh, lot of focus on the neoliberal approaches to governmentality, but the voices that have talked about a post-liberal post aspect of governmentality are not that many in the field, right? And it is exactly post-liberal governmentality has to do with this kind of bypassing of any liberal points because governmentality in the way that it was approached by Foucault, it would allow for this kind of like liberal aspects as well, right? that we learn how to govern ourselves in a very liberal manner, in a way. He talked about how freedom relates to the questions of governmental power. I mean, especially in his later work, when it comes to very diction, we, we see this kind of, the idea of Parisian, how it relates to questions of freedom and how, and, and, uh, and governmental power. So what we are trying to see, what we are seeing instead in the case that we're examining of each China relations, especially looking not only at the policy institution, at the institutionalization of the partnership, but also the policy implementation, is that they happen in a way as if we bracket the political dimension of the relationship and even the political dimension of the imposition of governmental power. And this happens, it doesn't mean that I mean, post-liberal governmentality uh, or a post-liberal way of thinking in governmentality terms, doesn't mean that we do not acknowledge the work that has been given on behalf of neoliberal approaches to governmentality, that they put uh, lots of emphasis on questions of management and effectiveness. What we're saying is that this is still there, but it happens in a way that manages to really overcome any other political and politicized differences and uh, obstacles that are uh, posed when it comes to the uh, imposition of governmental power. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really interesting. And I think this kind of question about the, the sort of post-liberal subject and, the, and, and not simply assuming that governmentality is about the diffusion of neoliberal norms, but that actually, you know, we have a kind of post-liberal subject emerging is, is, is one of the real strengths of the paper. Well, could you just explain in terms of Chinese citizens, because that's a, a big part of the claim of the paper is that there's an impact actually on the sort of everyday lives, the kind of construction of what it means to be a Chinese citizen. Um, you know, what are the impacts on, on on Chinese citizens? How is it shaping their political subjectivity? Uh, well, actually, uh, we in the, in the paper, we argue uh, this uh, kind of uh, post-liberal governmentalization of EU-China relations has uh, resulted in the diversified political subjectivities, um, and, uh, apart from the Chinese citizens, but also on the EU itself and the Chinese rulers. Uh, the Chinese citizens uh, and, and these uh, three uh, subjects uh, are, 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 are differentiated uh, in the way that they are, they are impacted by uh, this uh, governmentalization. Uh, 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 apart from the, the, the Chinese citizens, uh, I would like to say uh, we, we, we argue that the EU uh, has managed to promote its uh, liberal image as it used to be. And the Chinese rulers uh, here, it's quite interesting that uh, uh, they have projected itself an image of a capable, uh, resolute and effective uh, leadership uh, for domestic governance. And at the same time, uh, this uh, uh, Sino uh, European joint uh, governmental power has contributed to the social construction of the Chinese uh, political subjects. That's uh, the Chinese citizenry. And, uh, uh, they are capable of uh, assisting in 
governance practices within the country, uh, but uh, without questioning the absolute authority of the Chinese state. In other words, uh, they, they feel and they improve uh, their, their uh, ability, uh, but uh, at the same time, they, they, they do not feel, uh, they, do not, they do not realize how uh, does this uh, power come from. Yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, the, the main idea. So yes. in, uh, if I can jump in, uh, Martin. Oh. So the idea is that according to a post-liberal governmentality rationale, we have the social construction of political subjects and part political subjects in China. But this does not in, it, this does not result in liberal democratic subjectivities for the Chinese citizens. Yeah, no, and I, I think that comes along, uh, comes across quite strongly in the, in the paper. I mean, this kind of insight, um, it strikes me, possibly resonates with with other contexts, other political contexts. Um, I wonder, you know, for somebody who's maybe not working on the EU or China, what what kind of insights does your paper kind of give to to those researchers about post liberal governmentality or about the way in which intergovernmental cooperation can affect the lives of of citizens in particular kinds of ways. Uh, indeed, our study may have some uh, broader political implications beyond our, uh, our, our topic. Uh, Sino-European cooperation uh, can be seen as a medium of uh, European governance. Uh, uh, more precisely, it can be uh, seen as a tool for the EU to apply its governmental power internationally uh, with an indirect effect on the lives of citizens who are far away from any uh, EU countries. So uh, the nexus power relation that EU has gradually developed in different, part of the, uh, different parts of the world demonstrate a projection of governmental power uh, based on the, the, the EU's uh, governance uh, network. Uh, so if this is a valid point, EU scholarship uh, may uh, may, uh, may, may, may focus instead on how EU uses its uh, reserves of governmental power and whom in the world this power reaches. So, uh, yeah, although in this analysis we focus exclusively on EU-China relations and do not aim to generalize, our insights raise questions about the extent to which governmentality, particularly in its post-liberal form, can help us we read the government's practices of EU foreign policy generally. For instance, use a partnership with uh, uh, Russia, a, a, a difficult partner. Yeah. Or for example, let's think about how the EU has managed to work all these years with authoritarian regimes in the Middle East and in Northern Africa, for example, in the pre-Arab Spring period. Think about, for example, the cooperation between the EU and Ben Ali. All these issues may be, and this type of cooperation on behalf of the EU may be reread in a very alternative way just by looking and just by embracing this idea of post liberal government. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this idea, I mean, as you put it, this kind of idea of the empowered but not liberal subject, I think, um, uh, you know, I think is a kind of powerful insight precisely for those kind of questions around cooperation with you know, uh, non, what we might call non-liberal regimes, right? Um, so, yeah, no, I, I think that's a very strong uh, kind of contribution that the paper uh, makes. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask one final question. Uh, what are you going to be working on next? What are you working on at the moment? What can we uh, expect from both of you? Uh, Ivan? Oh, yeah, we are working on our own uh, projects, uh, but at the same time, we have a joint project. Uh, this is a special journal issue uh, project on uh, e uh, European, again, on European Union's uh, 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 external policy, uh, uh, to be exact, on European Union's public diplomacy around the world, uh, targeting uh, uh, different part, part, uh, part partners' uh, regions. And uh, in this project, we try to have a more comprehensive uh, uh, study uh, of uh, EU uh, PD uh, around the world, uh, centering around a number of questions. Uh, for example, uh, how the EU is designing and conducting uh, its PD 
uh, that address uh, uh, different regions uh, and, uh, and countries? And how has the EU PD been implemented in the, target, in, in the targeted regions by engaging uh, the elites and uh, general publics? And how is the EU PD received and digested by its international audiences? And uh, uh, what are the worldwide political and public reactions to uh, EU's PD? And what are the policy implications generally? And which also try to uh, link to the current COVID-19 pandemic, how this has affected the EU PD. And uh, uh, generally we have uh, altogether eight papers, uh, starting with a conceptual paper and then uh, uh, seven empirical papers on different targets, including Africa, Central Asia, China, Latin America, the MENA region, Russia, and the US. And um, in Beijing, would you like to say something about your individual uh, research? And I will say something about my individual research as well. <laughs> And then okay. I would like also to welcome Martin to tell us more about himself and his research, because I would very much know, would like to know, Martin, what you are working on on this. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, currently working on uh, uh, several papers. Uh, one is on uh, China's relations with Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, this is an, uh, a joint work with another scholar from uh, uh, Central uh, Europe. And, uh, uh, and also uh, I'm working on uh, uh, another paper on China's domestic politics. Again, this is a joint work with uh, two uh, Chi uh, Chinese scholars from, from the mainland and Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Martin, uh, currently I'm trying to collect data from my second research monograph, which will deal with the impact of EU referendum on European governance. And for this specific uh, project, I want to really flesh out the notion of the legitimate from the perspective of agonistic democracy. Don't think about Chantal Mill's work that much, think about Jim Tarrant's work, because I'm working primarily with the approach of Jim Tarrant to agonistic democracy. That's my first big thing. And something that I'm very much interested in is again about drawing about a new aspect of governmentality. I'm not going to talk about it in extent now because it's still work and research. And I want to see how this has impacted on the way that the member states of the EU deal with the European financial crisis between 2009 2014. So, this is something that well, hopefully, I mean, like, it might be something that I, or is, uh, I, I might be also something that I might think about for this specific article that I will say. It all sounds really interesting. Um, thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Um, and uh, you can read uh, the article, uh, Cooperation Between the EU and China, a post-liberal governmentality approach uh, in Review of International Studies. It's on first view uh, at the moment, uh, and we'll put the details of the uh, link to, to, to read it uh below this video uh and uh, i strongly recommend uh, for, particularly for anybody who's interested in a kind of intergovernmental cooperation the way it affects citizens the way it produces particular kinds of political subjects and thinking about kind of uh, uh Foucauldian approaches to governmentality and how you might move them on from simply thinking about liberal or neoliberal governmentality i strongly recommend uh you uh, read the article thank you very much for for talking to us today oh it was a pleasure it was a pleasure meeting you martin Yes, and uh, yeah, My let's stay in touch and stay safe. These are difficult to move to a where we're experiencing.